Hello and welcome to PMI TV. One result of lockdown has been a rise in the amount of pension scamming. According to Action Fraud, as of July, £11 million have been lost in this way. So why is it on the rise? How can you spot it? And more importantly, what can you do to stop it? Well, to discuss that, I'm joined now by Jonathan Watsley, Director of Wealth at Work. Jonathan, thanks for joining us. Um, why is pension scamming on the rise at the moment? Why is it a particular problem for scheme members? I think one of the issues is is that, that there's a, there's clearly a lot happening in terms of people thinking about taking their pension now um, under perhaps slightly unusual circumstances. So we've certainly seen examples of people where they're suffering from uh, reduced household income because of all that's been going on in terms of furlough and, and some people suffering reduced hours, some people suffering redundancy, etc. cetera. Um, so people then think, well, actually, could I supplement my income through my pension? And clearly, if they're, they're 55 and over, then 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 that is an option. Um, equally, we've, we've seen people that have been made redundant um, earlier than perhaps they uh, hoped for, um, finding it hard to find another job. Um, but again, because they're 55 and over, they're thinking, well, you know, maybe this is retirement for me. Um, so I think the, the, the one of the issues is, is that when people get in uh, almost um, bounced into, into a situation that they weren't really expecting, then that often makes them quite vulnerable to, uh, to scams and um, we can see that, that, that people want to make a decision, they're not really sure um, of what they should be doing, um, which is a bit of a bit of a scammer's paradise really. And we, and we do know through uh, uh, over the last few years that, that, that people overestimate their ability to, to spot a scam. Uh, the Citizens Advice Bureau did, did some research a few years ago now um, where they asked a number of people, did do they believe that they would be able to spot a scam? And the vast majority said, yes, they did. And then they were shown a, a number of advertisements um, of, of, of which some were scam adverts. Um, and unfortunately, the vast majority uh, picked the, the, the scam advertisement. So I think there's this whole element of people overestimate their ability to, to spot this. And of course, scammers are, scammers are very clever. You know, they, 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 uh, they, they look very, very credible. They have very credible websites. Um, often they will uh, use social media to learn more um, information about an individual or their local area. So, so the things that they come out with can be very, very compelling. Um, I think the other issue as well is, is that often they will use triggers that they know uh, people uh, will be interested in. So some of the biggest scams we've seen are things like forest, sustainable uh, uh, timber production, car parks, storage units. And we know that often the way that these are often sold in is, is you know, why would you not invest in a sust sustainable forest where you can get um, really, really good uh, returns and you're doing something good for the environment? And of course, it ends up that um, often has been the case where, in fact, some of those forests just do not simply exist. So um, there's no way that those, those individuals are, are going to get a return. So they are literally scammed out of, out of their money. Well, Jonathan, given we're all potentially vulnerable to a scam, what should scheme members keep an eye out for in particular? Yeah, I think it's it's um, really important to identify that there's there's two key things here. There's there's things which are are absolutely fraud, so somebody who's literally going to run off with your pension money. Um, but then there is another area where people end up buying inappropriate products. Um, so probably the, the, one of the best examples of that is, and, and, and we saw it with the uh, British Steel debacle that many people will remember when people were transferring their money into all sorts of places, um, where people were buying, for example, illiquid property funds. Um, well, clearly, if you're going into retirement and wanting to generate an income, then an illiquid property fund is probably not the best thing for you to do. So I think there is a distinction here between people that are literally running off with your money and people that are that are. Uh, 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 are not doing anything that is illegal per se, um, but it's certainly completely inappropriate for, for someone's needs as they're going to retirement. So I think this all comes down to um, people need time to think about what their options are and then make a, a very considered decision. And I think one of the one of the issues we see with scammers is is that they 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 talk often about um, time li limited offers. So you know, if you want to get this great return in this 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 great product we're offering, then really you need to sign the paperwork by the end of the week. Um, so those sorts of things should always raise um, a red flag to the individuals um, so that they 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 
because they really do need time to think these things through and check firms out. And one of the best places to check firms out is to to check the FCA register. You know, look at look at whether the uh, the person you're talking to is registered with the FCA. Look at whether the uh, the investment that you're uh, you're being asked to go into um, is on is a, is an FCA registered product or not. And it's very easy to do that from the FCA website, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So go on to the FCA uh, website and look at, yeah, look up, look up the advisor um, for a start. If you'll be in it, because again, you know, we've seen in history that, that people think they're talking to regulated advisors and, and often um, they may not be. Um, and also we've said in, in the past where somebody might be dealing with a, with a regulated advisor, but then they don't necessarily have the permissions um, that, 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 that are required. So for example, when people are, are uh, looking to transfer out of a final salary scheme, People need to, to uh, be a pension transfer expert, and often advisors are, are, are not. Some are, but not all are. So again, it's really important to check qualifications, which again, you can do on the FCA website. And what can employers and trustees do to help? Well, I think the first thing is to is to you know clearly be aware of, of the of the issues here. Um, I think a good starting point is the uh, uh, pension scams industry industry group. Um, and some of the principles that they set out. I think that's a good starting point for, for employers and trustees to, to, to start. And one of the things that they look at is, is, is you know, the process that an individual goes through. And certainly we've seen a, 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 an uptick, which is good news by, by employers and trustees saying, actually, we are going to try and put more of a process in place. We're going to put education and guidance in place. Um, and that could take many forms. It could be telephone it could be it could be seminars it could be uh, digital interventions via webcast or animation or something like that um, and the whole idea is is that it gives a very rounded balanced view generically about these are some of the things that you need to think about um, and of course within those things that you need to think about you need to be very aware of scamming and, and here's some of the, the sort of red flags to, to to look out for so I think that's that's probably the first thing but also what we're seeing is that more more employers and trustees are also appointing regulated advisors and again the, the, the whole notion here is that why would a trustee for example or a scheme not go out do their due diligence on regulated advisors do those checks you know make sure they've got appropriate qualifications make sure that their their regulatory record is exemplary um, make sure they do things like every single case that goes through their books is compliance checked before uh, the transaction goes ahead and of course, the other thing as well is trustees and employers have great buying power, so they can they can negotiate very favourable deals um, uh, with with firms of advisors to get this work done. So that all then will go towards protecting those individuals, those members from potential scams, because they're they're much they're less likely then to go off into the ether and to try and find um, you know, their own advisor, in inverted commas, whether that be a, a true regulated advisor or not, or, or you know, going off and, and just buying a, a, a random product, which may not be may not be appropriate. So I think I think the world is changing. I think we're, we're moving gradually um, from uh, maybe where a lot of employers and schemes sort of ticked the compliance box to say we've done the bare minimum that we need to do to comply with with um, our responsibilities into more now saying actually but this is really about the member at the end of the day and there's there's no point that member saving diligently for 40 years in a good scheme with good governance for all that to be lost to a scammer at the point that they they retire we have to leave it there jonathan watsley thank you for joining us thank you